Hey folks, this is Iowa throwing back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Extreme Unicorn Warfare. It's in its AMX 50B. This is a tier 10 game on Glacier. Um, wait, what? What? Oh, well, in addition to having barrels, apparently he's trying to mark up his barrel. Um, so this is, I'm guessing, on his way for his third mark of excellence. That's why he's running the large repair kits, the coffee, all that stuff, and all the gold. So, take this game with a grain of salt. <laughs> but it should be pretty awesome. Oh, anytime you can catch a mini mouse in the open with an auto loader, you just go ahead and unload into him. That poor guy just lost his ammo rack, in addition to just all of his health draining away. Well, that's a quick thousand damage. We're gonna reload and try this again, obviously. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Uh, sound is kind of loud, though, so let's see if we can turn this down a bit. There we go. Um, better. Apparently, Mini Mouse is still just gonna sit out where we can shoot him, so. Why not shoot him? I'm not certain what he was thinking was gonna happen. But I'm guessing it wasn't that he uh, he was showing his side over the, the ledge there and we kill him for it. But obviously that's exactly what happened. Um, the object, object 430 I'd like to say we should shoot at, but he's currently in cover. He will remain in cover for a little bit. He actually, um, by the time we saw him, had already crossed the gap. And so we weren't going to get any shots in on him. That P... Um, I was going to say that TVP's in interesting position where I thought he was going to get taken advantage of by the leopard that used to be over there but apparently the leopard has left or wasn't looking in this direction or something because he chewed up that E3 before he, uh, he got out of there and in fact the E3 is now on a little <laughs> just a little smidgen of health uh, one health that's got to be unfortunate and frustrating for that TVP unfortunately we just lost two allies uh, somehow I actually don't know what happened to them, other than obviously one got killed by 13i and another by... Wait, where's their 1390? Their T10 is somewhere. Have neither of them been spotted? That's interesting. Oh, but apparently it was up here somewhere. Oh, hi! Oh. Anytime you can track an enemy like that uh, in the open, I mean, we then bounced his return fire, which is awesome. But then, I mean, the poor guy just, uh, there's nothing you could have done about that. Which, like, this E100 has no choice except to get hit. Um, oh, we have a 268 on our flank. Thankfully for us, the 268 shot the M103 because that gives us the time to finish the reload. I don't, I was going to say, I don't think we're going to finish it before he fires again, but it looks like the Waffen Charger smacked the uh, 268, and yep, there we go. With the 268 backing off, it let us reload after we finished reloading. Unfortunately, the 268 died before we can do anything about it. Wait, that was RT-10, that's why it was on the spot. Oops. And R-39, yeah. I may have read the messages wrong. <laughs> As I'm sure somebody has already pointed out to me in the comments. <sighs> oh well. Never actually looked at this really cool. So that seems to be a tiny little ship with a giant mast. I don't think that's how that generally works. Unless this is supposed to be like a tiny little piece of a giant ship. Ooh, E3 is fired. That means we can pull out and put one through Zora Glacius. Not the most damage we've done in a single shell in this game. But of course, that is one one shot we'll take every time. Because an E3, no matter whether or not he is fired or not, is still dangerous. And uh, most people don't actually know where to shoot them as much as they may think they do. Um, oh, T49. Stall T49. Is that because he was trying to shoot us? 
Well, he's dead now, unfortunately. Wait, did we put that last shell in? I don't know if he actually fired that last shell or not. Uh, obviously, it didn't go in. But if it wasn't fired, then that's fine. That means it's one, one more shell we're going to have for later. I just wasn't looking at our shell count beforehand. And um, I didn't think he fired, but that doesn't mean he didn't. Ooh, nice shot. He's going to be able to take one more of those. Because apparently that 50 TP cannot hit the broadside of our barn from inside the barn. As he was more than close enough to that Waffle Charger to be doing his own damage to it. But he wasn't. We're up to 3,500 damage. And the scores are basically even. These are the kind of games you dread in auto loaders. So, yeah, it's great. We're, we're doing a bunch of damage. We actually have quite a few shells left. Normal, but that's something playing the game. You do not have many shells left. Um, so, in fact, this is probably a, a, gonna be a decent game for him. Oddly enough. <laughs> That's why it's being shown, right? But, um. Ooh, let's not get caught by the tortoise. But if we can catch the WZ out in the open, this will be worth it. A little bit of spine damage, and in fact, we get to finish him off. I'm not certain if we were actually spot or not. If we weren't, that's good. If we were, we may get hit in the back by a tortoise. Nope, apparently not. But the SCRV takes out the TBP, and our standard B dies to the leopard. See, I read it right this time. Blind fire. Two blind fires. I would, I wouldn't just keep with blind firing. Um. As, as awesome as this tank is, and as much ammo as it feels like you have left, um, blind firing and auto loader is just dumb. Um, one shell, often recommended. Two shells, gets to be a bit much. Anything after two shells, you should just stop. Uh, it, was, it looks like we didn't hit either of those shells. There we go, and then that. Ooh! I would have taken that shot too. Unfortunately, this is what happens in auto is so much is you just you take shells that feel like they're guaranteed, and then next thing you know, you're starting to run out of ammo. With 35 shells left, we're on a reload, so actually we're only gonna have 31 left in the tank in a second. Um, this is gonna get closer and closer to running out of ammo the longer we go. Ooh! As we bounce a shot and take out one tank, we start to put shots into the other. I don't know how many of these. Yep, this is the problem. Oh, and now we're starting to miss and bounce shots as he backs out of a otherwise bad situation. Um, honestly, though, for for being in that spot, this tank handled that rather well. I can't believe we bounced the side of our turret. Bounced that one shot off the side of our turret. Um, this thing generally just absorbs shells, like it just reaches out and gobbles up shells um, that would otherwise have passed harmlessly by because the turret wiggles and it reacts in the wrong direction, and then you eat it instead of, well, dodging it. Um, oh well. Ooh, the back of a 430U. I wonder what we're supposed to do here. I'm wondering if we're supposed to just murder his... Oh. <laughs> and then managing to just like move in exactly the right way to dodge the tortoise shell that's good oh a leopard a wild leopard has appeared unfortunately for the wild leopard we're almost reloaded unfortunately for us though that tortoise is on point and um this is gonna get a bit hairy and the leopard can kill us in two shots obviously we can kill the leopard in two shots the problem is, of course, that A, we can two-shot the leopard with a clip. But if the leopard has backup, we're going to die. Now that we've lost contact with the leopard, the only option is to back up until we know where he is. Now, okay. Well, that changes everything. Now that the leopard is dead, we can push out again looking for... Nope, the 430U has died as well. 
There's only two tanks left. We know where the STRV likes to hide. So, put a couple of shells in that direction. I wouldn't put too many. But it looks like he's, he's going to unload the clip over there. I don't... I mean, obviously we didn't hit anything. If we connected the shell, the STRV would be dead. Um, I don't think there's anywhere on his tank that would deflect one of our gold rounds. Yeah, he's not even in the location where last knew he was. Uh, Tortoise is hiding behind a cliff, more or less. We're not going to get a shot into him, I don't think. Oh, unless he backs all the way up, in which case we do get the one shell. We're up to 7,500 damage. If he does it again, we might get up to 8,000 damage, which would be really cool. Uh, in fact, he pulls forward enough that we're... You know... If we hit a single blind shot this game, we're up over 800 or 8,000 damage. And I'd really enjoy that. <laughs> Let's ju jump over and see what happened. Wow. Is, is about all I have to say. Ace tanker, spotter, bruiser, fire for effect, <laughs> seven bombs, which is nice, confederate, high caliber, and top gun. Holy smokes. <laughs> Confederate and Top Gun, those two happen together in the same game to the same player so rarely that it is always awesome when they do. Um, wait. 8300 damage. What? Who do we... The STRV. We did hit the STRV with one of those blind shots. Must have been one of the first two. Oh, awesome. Good. Up over 8,000 damage. Now, unfortunately, he did lose a ton of credits because, of course, firing gold shells the entire time plus a, a consumable will, of course, drop your money like mad. But overall, this was a great game and I think worth the expenditure of the money. Um, and yeah, probably worth taking the coffee as well. Well done, sir. Thank you so much for saying this in. I can't wait to see your next game. And, um, yeah. <laughs> wow, this was good. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. This is IOE Thread.